Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV, and as you might be able to tell, I'm in a hotel room, and I'm in Detroit because tomorrow I sit down with the CEO of Bollinger Motors to talk about their electric truck and SUV. But for this video, I wanted to, to take a few moments and articulate some of the things that I've been thinking and some of the things that I've mentioned on some recent interviews about this electric vehicle holy grail and what that exactly means. You see, I've been following the electric vehicle movement for nearly 10 years now, and every time an automaker comes out with an electric vehicle, the more that I realize how good Tesla's technology actually is. Though some might say that Tesla doesn't have a competitive advantage with their technology, I want this video to explore and answer the question, is that really true? For every new EV that comes out, it becomes apparent that creating a compelling EV that competes with the market leader, Tesla, is not easy. Take, for example, the Audi e-tron. Their first electric SUV, and first electric vehicle for that matter, looks like an Audi, and it will definitely appeal to their core base. The driver's display and infotainment system of their vehicle are nearly identical to their gas-powered siblings. However, the EPA range that was recently released comes in at 204 miles on a 95 kilowatt hour battery pack. Jaguar's all-electric Challenger, the I-Pace, has a 90 kilowatt hour pack and yields only 234 miles. Though Porsche's Taycan has yet to be released, the 311 mile NEDC range is expected to drop to 240 to 250 miles. Tesla, on the contrary, has offered a 265 mile battery since 2012 with their 85 kilowatt hour pack. It wasn't until five years later in 2017 that we saw another automaker cross that 200 mile barrier, the Chevy Bolt with 238 miles of range. Since then, we've seen a whole host of automakers come out with 200 plus mile range options, thankfully. However, none of them have yet to yield even close to what Tesla's current top end battery technology has. In August of 2016, Tesla introduced the 315 mile Model S P100D. The following January 2017, the non-performance Model S 100D was introduced with 335 miles. The Model X variants followed a similar timetable with ranges of 289 and 295 miles respectively. It doesn't end there though. Tesla's top end range for their more affordable Model 3 is currently sitting at 325 miles and a battery pack estimated to be around 75 kilowatt hours, including the upcoming Model Y 10. Of the 12 vehicles Tesla sells currently on their website have 300 or more miles. This raises the question, if Tesla does not have a competitive advantage, why do we see such a large gap between what Tesla offers and other standing automakers? I think this boils down to two unique factors. Number one, range, or how far can you travel on a single charge? And number two, charging. How quickly can you charge and how dense is that charging network? These two factors, range and charging speed, you could say are what people care most about because it gives them that freedom of mobility. It is an EV holy grail. To get a better picture of the landscape of how far ahead Tesla is in this EV holy grail, let's take a look at the entire EV market. These are the EVs you can drive off the lot today. Four of Tesla's five vehicles available now are in the top five for best range. The Model 3 Standard Range Plus was only beaten out for the fifth spot by the Hyundai Kona EV. Of the top 10 best range vehicles, Tesla takes 50%. If you factor in the pending Model 3 Standard Range, that's six out of the 10. As we factor in EVs scheduled to come out in 2019 or 2020, there is one automaker that I've been keeping a very close eye on, 
Rivian Automotive. In November 2018, Rivian stunned the EV community by announcing they'd be delivering in late 2020 and 2021 a truck and SUV with more than 400 miles. They will do this by stacking two layers of batteries together with a chiller plate in between to keep the pack cool. Looking at the list of current and soon coming EVs, the top 10 is dominated completely by Tesla and Rivian. It's not until you consider the top 20 that you see other automakers. Some, like Audi and Mercedes, don't even make that top 20 list. In order to fully appreciate what Tesla is doing with their batteries, you have to break the list down by segment efficiency. In almost every category, Tesla is the leader in efficiency. Somehow they found a way to make a beautifully aerodynamic vehicle with energy dense battery cells. The second part to this EV holy grail is charging. Though 90 to 95% of charging typically takes place at home in a garage, charging network and speed of charging are huge considerations for those looking at EVs. If you're considering buying an EV and you either do a lot of driving or travel on long road trips, charging network and the speed at which an EV charges could not be more important. This is because depending on the type of EV you buy, it may not be feasible to drive this EV a lot. Here's what the current CCS charging network looks like if you were to buy an EV today. It's not fantastic, but keep in mind that this network will likely get better over time, just as Tesla's did when they first introduced their supercharging network back in 2014. And for comparison, here is what Tesla's charging network looks like. I experienced this very thing firsthand when I took a trip from Denver to LA last month to attend the Model Y event. If I did not have a Tesla, this is what my CCS charging network would have been like. I could have added the slower charging sites to the map, but then I would not have arrived to the event on time. That's just the density of charging. Let's also talk about the speed of charging too. Not all EVs can take a high charge rate. However, this is where I see a sliver of hope. Most new EVs, especially higher end ones, come with the CCS charging standard. Porsche says the Taycan will have a 350 kilowatt charge rate. Rivian will do 160 kilowatts. The Polestar 2, Mercedes EQC, and Audi e-tron will do 150 kilowatts. All of the aforementioned EVs will be faster than Tesla's current Model S and X at 120 kilowatt charge rate and their expected bump to 145 kilowatts. If Tesla upgrades the S and X to Model 3 charge rates, which I do expect very, very soon, it will push that Model S and X ahead to 250 kilowatts. In summary, it really does seem like this EV holy grail has been more elusive to automakers than they anticipated. Even luxury car makers who have ample capital to be able to invest into battery technology, charging infrastructure, and electric powertrains have not yet been successful in challenging Tesla on the range in charging side. It may very well take a newcomer like Rivian to challenge the market leader. We'll just have to wait and see how things unfold. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What are your thoughts about this EV landscape and how far ahead Tesla actually is? Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you're a regular, hit the like button and please consider sharing this out. I spent a great deal of time putting these charts together to give you a visual representation of where the EV market stands to date. A big shout out to my Patreon supporters and I'll see everyone on the next video.